Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today I'm coming at you with that CHB, Competitive Historic Brawl for Friday. And if you don't like Historic Brawl before you completely X out of the video, just know that there should be a video going live on the official Magic the Gathering Arena YouTube page of me playing Standard. So there's still Standard gameplay for you to watch on that channel if you want to. There should be a link below or you should have subscribed to that channel since I'm appearing regularly on it now. Now, uh, yeah, you can find it. Magic the Gathering Arena. You know, the game you play. Official YouTube channel. Look for this smug, punchable face. Anyway, we're playing Urza Lord Protector, bowling out the big commanders from Brothers War and featuring them in competitive historic brawl decks and this one is one of the top tier because it already does a lot of things that were very powerful in the format but adds on the cost reduction of urza basically a ramp card in the command zone that can turn into a win con when you combine it with the might stone and the weak stone this leads us to a place of wanting to play plenty of artifacts and instants and sorceries to benefit from the cost reduction which is something we already love doing in our blue white decks it also leads us to a place of wanting to play a lot of artifact tutors, like Whir of Invention and Mightstone and Weakstone. Uh, or, I'm sorry, like Whir of Invention and, where'd it go? Inventor's Fair, that's the one. Because those can get the Mightstone and the Weakstone, but they can also get other things too. Other win cons in the deck involve making the opponent submit to Teferi's Will. We have several to fairies in the deck that is very powerful other potential win cons in the deck a go big artifact strategy using portal to phyrexia sundering titan and cityscape leveler because this thing ramps very well other potential win cons in the deck layers of discount so if you have urza and cards like cloud key and foundry inspector and where's that thing joyra's familiar that make artifacts cheaper and then you play something like a reality chip or mystic forge that let you play artifacts Effects from the top of your library, then you can end up just accumulating tremendous amounts of value by dumping all kinds of stuff onto the battlefield. Other win cons, we have Displacer Kitten, which can just flicker a value-based artifact over and over and over. You can imagine Displacer Kitten combined with Teferi. You can imagine it combined with Portal to Phyrexia or Sundering Titan. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna wreck you. And other win cons that you could find in the deck, uh, there is a Paradox Engine. Look, it already has everything that a paradox engine wants we already run were we already run a ton of artifacts we already run inventors fair we run cost reduction i get it some people hate this but i'm telling you straight up before you click off there are no paradox engine wins in this video every single game we found a different win con but if you watch the stream where we built and tuned the deck paradox engine got us out of situations that nothing else could get you out of i find it side rant amusing that people always give me crap for playing blue white control decks with no win cons then i add win cons and they complain about what the win cons are just because you don't like a win con doesn't mean it's not an effective win con no whining 10 push-ups, no. All right, we're going to dive in. Let the competitive historic brawl Urza Lord Protector nonsense begin. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're up against cats with thumbs. They're running original Joda. Or is it original Joda? It's the first Joda I saw in arena. We'll put it that way. Explore. Second land drops. It's like second breakfast. There you go. Crossroads off the top. Let's sign it up. And Joda is here. Looking forward to seeing what that does to us. Not a great spot for a Karn, is it? Let's untap. Let's play Urza. Let's hold up the laps. Although I am terrified to see what Joda can cast. Hour of Promise, a ramp spell? Okay. That's not that bad. They do have it all, right? Blue, white, well, doesn't matter now. They've got a world tree. Let's save the memory laps for something big. Because I guarantee they have big scary stuff. Soul Partition. Well, we could get rid of the Joda, but that's not really what matters anymore. All right, let's play you. Play this key for zero. We have a two mana reduction on artifacts and we want an untapped blue. 
So we could activate this and go get, well, if we could get Arcane Signet, that would work, but Arcane Signet's on the field. I don't think I have another way to just play two mana zero into an untapped blue. We could just get a land though. This also fetches Mightstone Weakstone. I don't think I can afford to miss my land drop. Yeah, yeah, man. If only, if only you came in untapped and we could hold up the laps. Definitely looks very suspicious to use the key to get an island and then have it available with Urza on the field. Hey, none of that. None of that. Okay, we got to stop that. That is game over if they get to pull it off. And they have it on top of the library right now. I don't think there's a three mana artifact I can fetch that will fix it. Um, Now what do I do? The soul partition won't save me. Getting rid of the Jota won't matter because they have the world tree. So I guess we do have to discover the formula and hit. Come on. Rebuke, Thought Monitor, Witness, Protection. Okay, well, we're gonna get casualtied. We better just have a lot of resources afterwards. We got a heart. White, blue, blue, blue. I guess this should be white. Casualties is happening. It's really gonna hurt. I wonder what they'll choose for artifact though. It should probably be the familiar. They are on only two cards. They'll need cards as powerful as casualties to keep the pressure on us. Yep. I'll miss those. I'll miss those cards. They were good. But we're doing okay. Don't think we need a block here. We're at 13. We've got a little while longer. We also have a witness protection. The world tree means they don't really need Joda's cost reduction, but we may as well make life hard for them. Here's to fairy. Sorry. You know what? I'm not done. Search for glory, huh? So what are our next steps? I guess we have a Paradox combo in hand. This can also get the Mightstone Weak Stone. We can try to meld it up. This can uh, go get Tome and uh, destroy all non-land permanents, huh? Wait a minute. I think they chose the wrong cost because I can choose two permanents and return them to hand. It's interesting. Well, just in case they didn't. Yeah, okay, they're really unhappy about that. I think they did choose the wrong cost according to this, but uh, even if they did, now we can get back the Thought Monitor. And yeah, good stuff. Today's Patreon shout out goes to Nate Davis, who has signed up at the token tier. There's a shark and wolf token on their way to you. And this is your shout out. Don't you feel special? If all of you out there would like to feel special, then please check out patreon.com slash covert go blue and Nate Davis. You're very cool. Now back to the video. Our opponent is playing Miria, Scholar of Antiquity, which is likely also an artifact paradox deck. Fragment reality is a good solution. We do need to draw land. Um, yeah, if we don't draw land, this is kind of a disaster. Maybe I should mulligan it for something that will work. If I do draw the land, we play the Urza, and then we play Archive, Familiar, everything. So it's all about whether or not we draw one land. But this hand is far from perfect, and it is very risky on the play. So I'm going to take the free mulligan because it's there. This might be worse. There's no blue. Covert no blue is never good. There we go. So, what do we keep? 
probably put away Seagate. It'll come, it'll come back later and we'll be able to cast it. I like to put away the DFCs if I don't need the land. Arcane Signet, huh? In the Terrarian. Okay. The artifacts are coming. The Leveler? It's a ways away. Urza. Doesn't really do much with this board. Maybe making Soul Partition one cheaper lets us go to Fairy Soul Partition if they play Myria. There you go. We got a drum. How many more? Come on, more. All right, land. Egg, it's happening. Uh, if I can find Karn though, I can shut this down really fast. So we're gonna try to keep that in mind. We got one open. They could use it to protect Myria. So we're gonna tap it down. Okay. Make you play that again. And it'll cost two more, so they have to have an untapped land. They've got it. Okay, back to work. Back to work. Black Blade. Eh, I guess. Have an interesting inclusion. The Forge. Let's see if we can find a solution here with Teferi. Esper Sentinel Swords. It's good. Swords you. No protection. Wrecked. Okay, I mean, they've got a hand. They definitely have a hand. Oracle or Forge? Let's start working on making our draws better and working towards our own kind of combos. Only one for that Maze Mind Tome. Let's pass. It's been a pretty pedestrian game for us so far. And the opponents survive two removal spells with Myria, which is usually very hard to do. A lot of times the way that the deck is built, it's a one note deck. And if you get rid of the first couple of cards, you can pull it off. Like if you get rid of Myria twice, you can usually pull it off from there. Okay. They hit a land. And I don't think defending Teferi there is a good idea at all. We need to start working on a cost reduction strategy. <laughs> I sound like some kind of a corporate retail juggernaut. <laughs> There's land on top. Let's get rid of it. Okay, you're three. That's good. Nice. Now we can play you. Keep reducing cost. Opponent's impressed. I mean, it's kind of what they're doing, right? Now we bust them. All right, stuff is happening. We're starting to mana up. Mana up. You've got to mana up. Uh, Displacer Kitten. Could get very interesting. Right now, the blinkables aren't exciting, but maybe we can sneak Oracle or a value artifact down. And it's only five mana right now for this leveler. Okay, they're drawing with Terrarian. And playing an Ornithopter. 
kick to the talk. Exile. Top card is Mountain. Good. Top card is Energy Refractor. Okay. Dragon Spark Reactor. That could be a problem. Could be a big problem. Equip that. Yep. Hmm. Do I want need to block this? Doesn't have trample. My life total will be in danger quickly from the reactor, but I think I just take this. Solve the equation. An Ugin I can't cast from the top. And it doesn't get its cost reduced by anything. Let's try it away been a weird top of the deck situation for a while so tempting to oracle the alpha and then solve the equation to go get t like time walk next turn this has been really bad though I need to do something about this let's see what we can find I've got two mana, for instance, and sorceries, that is. I could get the farewell, but I won't necessarily have the mana to cast it next turn. I think if I make my opponent's creature lose all of its abilities for a while, that will help a lot. Immortal Sun is on top. Don't need that. There's a foundry. I can't cast any, like I want to draw it and then, but I can't cast anything with it. So. All right, abilities are down, but the ornithopter can still carry a sword. I think I'm attacking anyway. I'm not blocking with any of these, right? I guess I still might block with the bank buster. Crypt, sure. Reactor goes up. Reactor hits. Bank Buster will step up. Now we gotta take this huge bump. We can't let them just equip the Ornithopter and attack with that in the future. All right, we now we draw the land. Let's try a little draw here. Portal to Phyrexia. Getting there. What is that, seven mana? Next turn I can level. Power nine in the deck. Now it says Witness Protection's the top card. Oh, it does say... Okay, so we conjure it. We do shuffle. Okay. Land off the top. You like to see that? Oracle, take one for the team. As much as I'd love to blink you into oblivion with the kitten. We just haven't had the draw that allows it. There's a sapphire on top. We'll take that. Will we? Will we play this first? No. And, oh, oh, hello. Hello. Let's go. How fun. All right. I think we level the black blade. And that'll do it. Okay. 
I got scared. I, I was very scared. I think we were a turn away from them just going absolutely off and killing us. So uh, the, hum the humiliation, the perpetual uh, ability loss was huge. All right, we're on the draw with a pretty slow hand, but there's a few ways that this could work out very well. So we'll keep it. We do have reality chip Urza. Oswald Fiddlebender can turn this into a paradox engine potentially. So we have some powerful cards. We're up against Kenrith. Kenrith is really tough. One of the things you most need to do to Kenrith typically is turn it into an elk or a legitimate businessman, make it lose its abilities. All right, turn two. Yep, let's cast the Ornithopter. Ramp, ramp, ramp. All about that ramp. Opponent gets it. They really get it. Oh no. Oh, they missed the land drop. Good. Kind of break we need. Here's a vessel. Rari's wake. Okay, Teferi, you have a job. That card is way too powerful. Right Doubling the production of all their lands? Absolutely not. Uh, we can... Let's play Ozzy. Threatens to go get the Mightstone Weak Stone with the Firemind Vessel. Celestis from the opponent. It's interesting that they're running Explore and they're running this Artifact Ramp. Sometimes you don't want to do both. They cast Idyllic Tutor. That will shuffle away the Mirari's Wake, but they could just fetch the Mirari's Wake. Hear me out. <laughs> if they have it, Elspeth Conqueror's Death looks pretty nice. They're going to go with Wilderness Reclamation. Big mana. This turns off their Mana Rocks. Huh. Let's do like this. I could get Paradox Engine, but I can't go off with it here. Let's get the Mightstone Weak Stone. Take a little draw too. Good stuff. All right, we play Karn. We play Urza? Yeah. Urza, then Karn, then and Moon Silver Key. And activate it. Seems good. Oh, well, let's plus first. No time for a break. Okay. What do we get with the key? So many options. Uh, probably key to the archive. <laughs> uh, what, what is it, opponent? Were we having too much fun on your watch? Yeah, now their artifacts don't work. So they do have Wilderness Reclamation. They can play it next turn, but the next turn we meld Urza and it's just... It's too, it's too explosive. This draw was too explosive. When we hit our ramp early, the things this deck can do are, ins it's insane. All right, we are on the play. This is an island gate, which means it lets the Glacial Fortress enter untapped. I'm a little worried that we will stall there with this hand, but I do have Swords to Plowshares, and our opponent appears to be Auras, so I'm going to keep it. It's kind of scary. Gotta draw a land. My stone weak stone. Gotta draw lands. Gotta draw lands. Hoi! Got there. So, do we run out Urza? I think they want to play their commander next turn. But if we had a fourth land available from Search for Glory, we'd be able to play Teferi and remove their threat. But, uh, yeah, let's just do it. Just run out Urza. 
we can draw another land. Like, the upside if we do rip another land is so high. Don't do it. Hands off. Prison Realm. Hmm. Okay. Can I get rid of that? Ugin can do it. Uh, let's decline and leave that out there. That can do it too. Need a land. Can grab the Inventor's Fair. Right now we don't have double white. So I guess I should be a responsible gamer and get the white source. Very boring. This also sets us up for swords to plowshares here. So what's this do? There's a battlefield. Look at top seven. You may reveal an aura, put the rest on the bottom. When an aura becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1. One -one. Ooh, that is a target. That's gotta go. It's a very good card. It's a fairy. Find a land. Nice. Emergence zone, not very important in this matchup. We're not playing around counter magic. Okay, I see what the opponent's strategy is this game. They're just gonna try to nerf everything we play. How do we deal? Let's play Might Stone, Weak Stone, and draw. Sundering Titan? Sundering Titan. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now we blow up our gate. I don't like that. Be a basic island to get nuked. All right. Restoration of a Ganjo. It's a plains. Katilda. 4-4. Four, four. Very strong. What to do? What to do? If I can get down this... I think Patriarch's Humiliation just kills Katilda because it loses its abilities and it's a 0-0. Zero, zero. So that's easy. Sundering Titan blows up lands, but let's wait till after the Aganjo goes off. So let's play Gilded Lotus. Let's just have a ton of mana coming up here for a big turn. I think if I had tapped differently, I could have done something cooler. Oh well. Envoy, sure. July. All right. Humiliation. Killed it. Do I want to sack my Mind Stone? We have so much to do with our mana. I don't really need it, do I? Need good options more than I need the Mind Stone? When it gets Ancestral Mask. Plus two, plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield. Wow. So they have Hexproof, which means River's Rebuke doesn't get there. So I have to... One, two, three. Not an artifact. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. I have to somehow remove the Shalai first. And Ugin can kill it. Next turn, I think they kill Ugin. Uh, let's go. That which is Hexproof must go. What do we conjure? Tome of the Infinite gets Light of Hope. That can blow up an enchantment. That could be very interesting. Let's see what they do. Oh, 
Okay, here comes the captain. Captain's gonna go seven deep. They get an aura. They can put it in the hand. It is Sentinel's Eyes. Plus one, plus one, and Vigilance. Okay, that's an enchantment creature. Love it. I really hope they put the Ancestral Mask on the Envoy. Please put the Ancestral Mask on the Envoy. Yes! Oh my gosh, it's huge! It's so enormous! Bam! <laughs> you thought you had me, huh? And then they leave. <laughs> but all... <laughs> they didn't even find out about the river's rebuke. Why? Why'd they leave? I had so much more pain and suffering on the way for you. Here we go. Our opponent is playing this party party Rakdos crazy we have some good removal and counter spells so I'll keep it Grim Initiate is that a warrior it is a warrior Juari Disruption in the house. Let's see what amazing two drop they want to play. Yeah, this is a curve out aggro deck. Should I hit that with a Juari? Should I hit it with a removal spell? I'm, I'm going to play the Juari. Yeah, slow him down, right? And Robber of the Rich, one of the classic snowbally cards from uh, days gone by. Let's go ahead and play Urza see if they can deal it opens up all kinds of good angles next turn forces them to have a very good turn what the hell is that swashbuckler extraordinaire looks like it's from uh i don't know what set was this uh the alchemy horizons baldur's gate two and a red two two and enters the battlefield create a treasure whenever you attack you may sacrifice one more treasures when you do up to that many target creatures gain double strike and it's a rogue warrior it's half a party on its own it's crazy okay here's a foundry inspector we have Metallic Rebuke is available. This thing with Double Strike would be a problem, but I guess we let them sacrifice, right? Judy. Okay. Counter Judy. Get to Lava Runner. Sure. Let's see if they want to sacrifice a treasure to the Swashbuckler. They don't. Just gonna kill it. Try to make the place safe for Teferi, who should be coming along shortly. Although that tapped land off the top was not ideal. We set ourselves up for Teferi if we top deck the land. Just drew the wrong land. And this deals combat damage, make a treasure. And it's a rogue. Wizard, warrior, rogue. Not quite full party. They are taking their time on casting this. What all does this do again? Flying Death Touch haste. Creatures you control have Death Touch. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker. Teferi, it's not a safe place. But you're coming out anyway. I know my responsibility. You know what? I'm not done. Ooh, free bank buster? Must be my birthday. All right, so the idea here is I get them to play their commander, Zagras, and then we remove the Zagras 
and they attack with all these because they believe the death touch will get them to Teferi, right? So that they can kill Teferi. But when we remove Zagreus in combat, we can block and kill some of their other creatures, and Teferi lives. Yeah, this is a cleric, so it was the last type that they needed. Really? Nobody else? Ah, fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Draw. We need to move quickly. I'm working on it. All right. Forge. Farewell. Farewell. Yeah, farewell's really good. If Teferi can make it through this turn. Otherwise, it becomes medium very quickly. It's probably still a good keep, though. We don't have to name artifacts. Let's see what we draw. There's a there's a key. Okay, name artifact. One mana, play Firemind Vessel. Leveler on top. Alright, Teferi's probably gonna die. Oh, we've got the farewell up our sleeve. Is this reveal? You may look. Okay, they don't know about this. It's a big deal. Thief of Heartbeats. Sorry, Teferi. Your heartbeat probably going to get stolen here. Very sad. They are lining up the combat. That goes face. Might as well, since we're going to sweep. Time now what? See ya, buddy. Good work. Visitor, yep. Glad you played it all out. This draws a card at the beginning of each player's upkeep if that player has no cards. Well, I have a card. <laughs> it's a good one. Gilded Lotus on top. Yeah, that's three mana for three mana. Seems good. Can I turn this into an artifact and then play it? No, nah, that's not how it works. It's only cast. All right, Urza. You'll have to come back in a, in a minute. We're going to exile all creatures. Are we also going to hit graveyards? Um, sure. Nah. There isn't much, right? Oh, there are definitely some good creatures. Yeah, let's name, no, let's hit graveyards just in case. I'm sure they're using priest in response. They want that card. They want that lose to life. All right, say goodbye. Now let's draw. Land and land, okay. But we have we got mana ready, oh, and we have inventors fair, so we can we can do some cool stuff. We can go get engine, weakener. We can also go get might stone weak stone if we want to go for that. Engine isn't an assured win. It's close. It's a good it's a good play, but it's not an assured win. Get rid of some land. Go ahead and draw this land. Nothing wrong with hitting your land drop. Oh, there's the Might Stone Weak Stone. Okay. Just gonna minus five the Awakener. Urza. 
Don't have the seven mana, but if we hit the right things off the top. Aw, oh, baby. Let's do it. Go on. Prove you're worth my time. All right, what else? Uh, soldier up, I think. And also threaten mass board wipe. Next turn. Ramp up production immediately. Should be pretty good. And yeah, just give them a minute. They're probably still reading. I'll do. Urza comes out and dominates. They are on the draw. Our opponent is Urza. <laughs> of course it is. But we have witness protection. Let's keep. Oswald can do some fun stuff if we draw more artifacts, which we probably will. It's what our deck does after all. Cold Steel Heart. I didn't buy you. Don't think I'd fragment that anyway. It does stink to be behind the eight ball against a lot of ramp. But hey, magic happens. Let's see if the opponent counters. They do not. Immortal Sun. It's a good card. So I guess I have to fragment reality on that. Which could hit a lot of things, including Mightstone Weakstone. <laughs> could be bad. Let's play the Tome, or er, mm, Foundry, play Tome, and Fragment. Okay. When does this happen? At the beginning of your draw step. So they didn't have a counter last turn, so I'm pretty sure I can do this in upkeep, and then whatever they get comes in tapped, right? Yeah. So that's the right timing. Urza Prince of Krug. Artifact creatures, plus two, plus two. Six mana, create a token that's a copy of an artifact. Okay. How exciting. Mox Amber. Urza. Patient rebuilding. What? At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent mills three cards. Then you draw a card for each land put into their graveyard this way. Ugh. All right, let's see what we hit. Light of Hope, please. Four swords. Ponder. Ponder, you say. Let's try that. Uh, none of these solve any problems. So let's shuffle. More creature lands. If I had a portable hole in my deck, would it do me any good? No. I could turn this into a one mana artifact. I think what I need to do... And it hurts. It really hurts, but I think we need to do this. Go get key. Day of Judgment, Crows and Grip, Regrowth. The grip handles the rebuilding. Discard a card. I think the cave can go. This does still take green. It's not mana of any color, unfortunately. Witness protection. Should it be this thing that makes the copies or this thing that melds into hell on earth? Should it be the commander? Honestly, I'm really scared of this as a mana outlet right now, so I'm going to put it in witness protection. And now patient rebuilding. No lands were hit. I've never been so happy about that in my life. Ooh, that can hit the key. No! No! What a top deck. Okay. What else can I do? Uh, I have another... F oh, wait. I can go get... Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, Metamorph doesn't solve it. 
fog. Yeah. I guess we work our way to Mightstone Weakstone. Sorry, Tome. If we're just going to replace it next turn. Ooh. Well, no, it would become a copy of the legitimate, legitimate business person. <laughs> Not great. Uh, I guess we'll get this. Or no, this can cast the grip. Let's get this. Any color. Secret tech. Let's cycle. The portal. Portal's good. Oh, there's two lands. Oh no. Oh no. Baby, don't hurt me. No more. <laughs> what is love? No. <laughs> Relic of Legends. Good. More mana rocks. Oh no, they got their Might Stone, Weak Stone. Will they, do they have enough? They don't have enough, I don't think. Don't think they have enough. They're going to kill my Urza. Ugh. The portal's going to get it back. Should I decline? That's so irresponsible to decline. What if Portal doesn't resolve? What if they destroy it? They top deck the cast out before. Oh, come on! Opponent! What are you doing? You started this way, <sighs> but I'm going to end it. I'm salty. I'm very salty. You're done. Here's how salty I am. Now we can save it. There'll be something bigger later. Seagate Restoration. Good card. So they want to meld next turn. We can't allow that. Crows and Grip can hit this. Get key. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And then what do we have? Five left over? Six? All right. So we want to play you. Yeah. We want to let them pay seven though, right? They're still just going to grind me out with patient rebuilding. Yeah, let's wait for them to pay seven and then go for the grip at split second. Maybe they won't for some reason. Who knows? All right, no lands, no lands, no lands. Yes, <laughs> getting lucky on that. Uh-huh, plus one, plus one counter on the business. Remember your In responses! Kill it. Congrats. You spent seven mana on nothing. All right, my turn. The portal to Vivraxia. Oh, 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 I'm, I am salty. I am a salty person. No lands. No. Okay. <sighs> now you might say, if I play the land, I got greedy with the Seagate holding the land. If I'd play the land, they just sacrifice the legitimate business person. So it's not like it would have resolved. And I still do need the card from the Seagate Restoration to have a chance. Narset. It's pretty good. Immortal Sun? Rivers Rebuke. <laughs> Pretty good card. I went second, right? I think I did. 
still, we can play this. I think we're going to fog no matter what, because they're, they're going to go after Narset, so we're not going to brainstorm here. All right, Narset's going to shut this down. I bet it's three lands. All right, two lands. Good stuff. Good stuff. There's your plus one, plus one. Here's your attack. Here's your fog. Got him. Oh, destroyed by fog. <laughs> and I guess uh, fear of rivers rebuke. Oh my goodness. That was a battle. That was a proper battle. I love Urza. I absolutely love the way that this deck is playing right now. And you don't need to use Paradox to win. You don't even have to put it in the deck if you don't want to. There were no Paradox wins in these games. Blue-White has a number of win cons. They're just kind of salty win cons. Melding Urza is a little bit cooler, but it's really no different. And this deck so far, uh, my win rate's been really high. Like, really high. I think most people don't know quite what's coming. So if you're going to play an Urza list... This is my top recommendation. Go get it. Dive into Historic Brawl. Meld some stuff. Have some fun. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.